Did you know that a humble sprouted seed can unlock a wealth of nutritional benefits? Today, we will speak with a true innovator, Doug Evans. He is someone who has not only embraced the magic of sprouts, but has dedicated his career to resolving health and wellness. Doug is known for his role as a pioneer in the health industry, particularly in the world of sprouts and plant-based nutrition. He co-founded and served as the CEO of Juicero, a company that gained attention for its innovative cold-press juicing system providing users with fresh organic juice at home. Doug has gained recognition as a sprouts pioneer through his focus on the nutritional benefits of sprouted seeds and grains. Sprouting is a process that involves germinating seeds, nuts and grains to embrace their nutrient content. He is transforming gardening and the Grow Your Own Food movement and is a best-selling author of The Sprout Book and a co-founder of At The Sprouting Company. Doug is here with us today to promote healthy living and to help you optimize your health through sprouting. I'm thrilled to introduce you to our amazing guest, Doug. You are listening to Health, Happiness and Planet podcast, where we explore different ways to boost our well-being, live a more fulfilling life and protect our planet. Join me as I chat with inspiring people and professionals from all over the world, uncovering strategies for improving our lifestyles and nurturing our precious planet. I am Juan. And this podcast is proudly brought to you by Wave Business Excellence Footprint, my digital training company that cares about your career and personal development. I am passionate about making the world a better place. So if you share my enthusiasm, this show is for you. Together, we can steer towards a healthier, happier life while leaving a positive footprint on our beautiful earth. Join me as we explore how being healthy, happy, and caring for our planet are all connected. Hello, Doug, and welcome to the Health, Happiness, and Planet podcast. It's so great to have you here. Well, thank you, Juan. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, health, happiness, the planet, all things I care very much about. And the good thing, it's all correlated. Yeah, you know, we cannot have one without the other. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you're definitely a person whom I can learn a lot from, and I'm sure my listeners as well. And before we jump into the topic of sprouts, can you share with us your background and how you got interested in the world of health and wellness? Sure. Well, I was a workaholic for most of my life, you know, up until my early 30s. I'm 57 now, but in my early 30s, my entire family was experiencing very serious health issues. So my aunt got type 2 diabetes and they had to amputate both of her feet below her ankles. And my uncle got heart disease and my mother got cancer and my father got heart disease. And then my brother became diabetic and had, had his first stroke. So with all of these things around me, that's what prompted me to change my own life right? And I went from, you know, being a workaholic, just wanting to make money and having significance into wanting to do something that was aligned with my own personal health and healing for my friends and family. So that was the shift. And that happened almost 26 years ago. I mean, I've been raw vegan for almost 26 years now, over 25 years. And in New York, it was very rare to be vegan, nonetheless being raw vegan, but it made so much sense to me that I was really inspired to do it and I wanted to share this lifestyle with others, so we created a platform where we could share this information and these knowledge and these products. And New York City, which you know people who live in New York think it's the center of the universe, but we had a lot of people coming in and the business did very well, and we opened up a dozen raw food stores that were selling cold-pressed juice and salads and entrees and snacks and desserts, and everything was fresh, ripe, raw, organic, made from fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, seaweeds, and sprouts. So that was my, my background. And then I went deeper into the cold-pressed juice world you know, for five years, 
And then I had this awareness that sprouts were more than a garnish and they were more than a, a side dish and that they were more than just a superfood, that they were really, really powerful and they were under-recognized. And so since the seeds and the sprouts didn't have a voice, about seven years ago, I started, you know, with a mission and alignment of sharing the, the gospel, the insight, the magic of sprouts and sprouting with the world. And I've been focused on that um, very seriously since 2017. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect. And I think in those days, it was almost three decades ago when you went plant-based. So it was not only plant-based, but it was even, I would say, a level deeper, which is to go raw plant-based. And I'm sure that yeah. in those days, it was probably something not that frequent, you know, something that did not happen that often. And what was the reaction initially of the people around you when they were saying, what, you're going plant-based and on top of it, you're going raw? Was there some kind of like rejection? I think that I'm a very independent thinker and that I didn't really care what other people thought. You know, I looked at my body as this transport vehicle for my soul and my spirit. And, you know, I remember reading um, an early raw food book that ended, you know, with just the awareness that if you're eating for other people, you know, you're not going to be eating for yourself. So I didn't care. What was hard was you know, you'd go to a restaurant and, you know, the three tricks of every chef are salt, oil, and fats, right? Salt, fats, and, and sweeteners. So they would add that to everything. So the abstraction, and so that's when, you know, I became very comfortable with eating alone or bringing my own food or eating outside. And, you know, when you're raw, it's so much easier to clean up, right? Because you know, everything, you just rinse off your plates. You're not like, I had a dishwasher. I never used it because it was just so easy to, to do my own cleaning and maintenance. Yeah. So I think people, you know, now can appreciate a lot more of that I've been doing it for two and a half decades than in the early stages there. It just looked like I was from another planet. <laughs> yeah. And I think if you compare between before and today, today it's so much easier for people to say, oh, I'm going to go vegan, I'm going to go plant-based. But the only downside from today is that you have so many options that are processed items. You know, if they have like the processed patties for the burgers or they have the, the soy chicken uh, imitation and everything seems to be that it's all just an imitation of, of the real food. And at the end, it's probably just as unhealthy as, as just eating the other foods. So therefore, I think today, even though it's easier to be vegan, but at the same time, it's easier to do the unhealthy style of vegan because I look around me and the people who try to go vegan, they say, well, we tried it, but I didn't lose weight or I gained weight and, and my health issues were still the same. But I'd say, yeah, but <laughs> what type of plant-based nutrition did you have? Did you eat sprouts? Did you eat anything that doesn't come with a barcode? So that's why I think from the times when you started, at least you, you were not um, influenced by all of that marketing of whatever is supposed to be vegan out there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I, I take a you know, slightly different view on that, that to me, if someone makes the decision to become plant-based, then they're already voting on a moral and ethical basis. And then it's a matter of getting them to improve on it. Yeah. So that, that's my approach. So I'd much, much rather see someone eating a Beyond Meat burger than eating yeah. a traditional burger. There's no question in my mind. And I think that if they're eating the Beyond Meat burger, then they're eating a salad and they're interested. And then the education will get them further down the path to doing more and more raw. So look, even on my social media platforms, in the beginning, I was very reluctant to share if someone posted sprouts with fish or sprouts with meat, right? And now, like, I'm happy to share that because it's showing people leaning in the right direction and that I'm making a difference because if they're doing sprouts today, it may be replacing, even if it's only one, you know, one ounce of the animal product, it's moving them in the right direction. 
Yeah, absolutely, 100%. One thing that makes me very curious is how are you drawn towards the nutritional benefits of uh, sprouted foods? What brought you more that direction? Well, what got me into the sprouts was the awareness of that all of these things were what you were eating. And when I moved to the desert, that's when I thought like, wow, it's really hard to grow stuff, right? And if you grow stuff on your own, it's much more nutritious. And then that would make it easy for me to be controlling what I was eating. So before that, like I didn't have control of what I was eating, I was dependent. And with sprouts, it was like, oh, in these, you know, these little glass jars, I'm able to grow my own food and have as much of it as I want. And the fact that I could grow thousands of calories without soil, without sunshine, without fertilizer was just a huge breakthrough, you know, that, that I became aware of. Yeah. And on top of it, they grow very fast. So it's not like you need to start planting a seed and you have to wait for days, weeks and, and months until you see something, at least with sprouts, you know that in a couple of days you already have it. Well, I mean, that, that's really it. And look, the seeds themselves are also edible. They're just better when you sprout them, right? They're just more bioavailable wow. and you're getting more food. But just the fact that you get to tap in to this super nutritious like platform this category of living foods. Because if you think about most things that people are eating, you mentioned barcodes, but they're in a box, they're in plastic packaging, they've got additives, preservatives, food coloring, genetic modification, pasteurization, shelf stabilization, fillers, ingredients, all of this other stuff. So the fact that when you're consuming a sprout, you're consuming nature's first food, like the first principles. Like there is history going back, research 3,000 years before Christ, BC, there's records of sprouts being used as sustenance, as a food source in ancient Egypt. So this is not new. What happened is it's just been overlooked, but it really is as fundamental as the wheel. Yeah. And is it true that sprouts are three times more nutritious than the grown vegetables or grains? Well, every seed, every sprout has its own story and its own um, value difference. If you think about what's happening when you're sprouting a seed, right? For example, if you take a lentil, when you sprout a lentil, you double the antioxidant levels, you triple the vitamin C, and you're quadrupling the soluble and insoluble fiber, right? And that's just on a lentil. If you think about alfalfa sprouts versus alfalfa hay, alfalfa hay is eaten by a horse or a cow, and it's mostly insoluble fiber, right? It's resistant starch, RS1. It's hard to digest. It's fiber, right? Yeah. But if you think about at the sprout stage, it has chlorophyll, it has micronutrients, it has phytonutrients, it has both soluble and insoluble fiber, and it's very bioavailable. So as the alfalfa gets bigger, it's getting more fiber, it's consuming more water content, but the nutritional density is actually being diluted. I, I'm careful not to use too many broad terms, but that's one part. In terms of like the broccoli, the broccoli contains this precursor to sulforaphane, a compound called glucoraphanin. So it turns out every seed has a finite amount of glucoraphanin in it. And then as the seed sprouts and grows, the amount of glucoraphanin gets diluted. So by the time you get to mature market stage broccoli, the amount is less than 100 times more in the sprout than in the mature broccoli of this glucoraphanin. So every case is different, yeah. but fundamentally the sprouts are jam-packed with the micronutrients, phytonutrients, polyphenols, bioflavonoids, isothiocyanates, the glucosinolates, and that as it's getting bigger, it's growing, but it's changing. So 
if you're eating it in the sprout stage, day three to day seven, it's very nutritious. Wow, that's amazing. So let's just say theoretically, if the supply chain for the food breaks down for some reason or the other, and somebody has in their home a lot of sprouts uh, store, lots of seeds, could they then live for many weeks or maybe even months uh, by just consuming sprouts? Oh, you could live for years. Wow. You could live for years. Like I lived on a sprout experiment for 30 days. Wow. And it was very easy to do. What happens is that food engineering triggers the human weaknesses, right? So they're taking advantage of how humans were programmed around scarcity. So they're able to program and engineer food so that it releases pleasure sensors in the brain so that people eat more. And that's where salt and sweeteners and fats um, people think that they want those, they think they want to eat them, but if you end up eliminating those, you can start to taste new flavors, new textures. Like I authentically crave the flavor and the taste of raw sprouts. Wow. <laughs> like that's what I'm thinking about, that's what I'm craving. Now, if I were to eat the other stuff, I would overeat it. Hmm. Like it's very easy to overeat cooked food, processed food, refined food, meat, dairy, animal products, um, refined carbohydrates, right? It's hard mm. to overeat sprouts. Yeah. Like the worst thing, if you try to overeat sprouts, you know, you'll get bloated, you'll get full <laughs> too fast and the body will say, okay, stop. Yeah. You know, you've had enough. And that doesn't happen with normal conventional food. Yeah. So probably also the normal conventional food, you just get so many of those empty calories now because you get calories, calories, and you get no, you have no nutrients in those calories. And at some point of time, when you ate that huge burger, your your body will say, hey, I still don't have the nutrients I need. Could you give me some more? Yeah, and then, then you throw more food in there. So I think probably also with the sprouts, as they're so nutrient dense, that they're really just giving all what the body needs. And then you don't have those signals there where it's just sending you saying, I need more because it had all what it needed to 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 survive till the next meal. A hundred percent. Wow, that that's that's really impressive. Yeah, especially if I think about how underrated sprouts are in in most places when I go, it, if at all. I mean, I barely see sprouts in restaurants, and if I do see them, then they're just a little a little side note on on the dish, yeah, just a little bit. But but it's not the main it's not the main course usually. Yeah. Well, the main reason why is if you're buying sprouts in in a supermarket or food service, it's very expensive, yeah. right? The cost mm. per per ounce is very expensive, or per um, per gram is expensive. But if you're growing it on your own, it's more affordable, mm. and that's what you know. The work that we're doing is really educating people globally around the power and control of growing your own um, vegetables. Yeah. So I think when restaurant owners become more aware of that it's actually not just nutritious to grow sprouts for, your, for their clientele, but it's actually um, more economically viable, yeah. then we'll see a lot more of that um, happening. Absolutely, wow. Time for a quick break to mention that the sponsor of this podcast is Wave Business Excellence Footprint, a digital training company deeply committed to your career development, personal growth, and the well-being of our precious planet. Dive into a wealth of knowledge with over 20 courses available on our website, www.wave-bef.com tailored for both managers and employees aspiring to become tomorrow's leaders. One of our best-selling courses is the Presentation and Communication Skills Training, perfect for those creating and delivering presentations in their companies. Whether through video conference or live meetings, if you want to convey your message effectively and do an outstanding job this course equips you with the skills to be a better creator and presenter. Check out the testimonials on our website. The results speak for themselves. During my time in the corporate world, I often wished I had the opportunity to access such courses at the beginning, making my learning experience quicker. And now, one further topic before we jump back to the conversation. 
For those of you resonating with the themes of health, happiness, and planet, discover information about our three-day retreat in Spain by reaching out to my team at the email address hhp at wave-bef.com. You will obtain further information about our life-changing retreat held once a year together with some of our remarkable podcast guests. Each retreat is unique, leaving you energized with a set of simple tools to take control of your health and happiness sustainably. And the best part? You will be surrounded by like-minded individuals, ending the retreat with a personal action plan shared regularly within the group. For those who are not so yet into the sprout topic, there's also something called uh, microgreens. Could you tell us the difference between sprouts and microgreens? I think they're very, very similar and they're both healthy. The main difference between sprouts and microgreens are microgreens typically start at the end of the sprouting stage. Okay. So sprouts are from day zero to day seven and microgreens are from day eight to day 21 or so. And typically microgreens are grown flat and they grow up. And so they're, they're using soil or some sort of sprouting medium so that they could grow. And they're typically grown using some sort of fertilizer or soil to enrich them because at the end of the seven days, the sprout runs out of energy so that therefore it needs that in order to continue to grow. Yeah. So what I love about the sprouting is that you can grow them without the soil, without the sunshine, without the fertilizer, and that you're getting this crop within a week. Amazing. So from the day that I start sprouting, let's say day zero, as of how many days could one already start uh, consuming them? I mean, as I said before, the seeds are edible. Mm -hmm. So the legumes are very consumable in, in two or three days. Yeah. You know, broccoli sprouts are consumable on day three and they probably have the highest concentration of the glucoraphanin on day three. But if you're eating them for food and you're eating them for healthiness, you'd eat them on day five or day seven. Okay, perfect. Good to know what, what would be the, the best time to eat them. And for yourself, do you also eat microgreens or you just prefer to stay with the sprouts? I don't grow microgreens. Okay. I'm growing sprouts. If I go out or if I'm traveling and microgreens are available, I will certainly consume them because I think they're a great viable option. Yeah. But from my own perspective, you know, what's easy for me to grow is the sprouts. Yeah. Okay, perfect. What would be the recommended, I would say, amount of sprouts that one can eat throughout the day? If you have, let's say, a plate, would you also recommend that you could have, let's say, half a plate of sprouts? Or what is your rule of thumb? The, the simple thing that I, the way I look at sprouts, one, is number one, sprouts are vegetables, right? So if you're eating a plant-based diet and plant-forward diet, vegetarian diet, vegan diet, you can eat a lot of sprouts. So number one, sprouts are vegetables. So they're food. Number two, sprouts are vitamins and minerals. So they contain this wide array of vitamins and minerals. So they're very nutritious. And I use them instead of taking powders and supplements. I like to eat sprouts. The third thing is sprouts are medicine, right? So they've got all of this research study um, behind what the medicinal properties of sprouts are and how they could be used in different settings. And when you're using it in that case, it's very prescriptive and it's very deliberate. So, you know, as I've experienced eating just sprouts, you know, that's one thing. And to anyone who's out there, my encouragement is eat sprouts first and eat as many as you can because they're the most nutritious, most affordable option for you. And the more sprouts that you're eating, the less likelihood you'll have room to eat other stuff. Yeah, perfect. Today, it's, it's so much more important to have that option with uh, having sprouts being so nutritional dense because I think that the earth where all of our crops are growing, it's already so depleted that everything that we're eating, they're already also very depleted. So if, if the earth is weak, then you also have probably weak crops and don't have that much vitamins and nutrients as they would if you have a very healthy earth. So therefore, 
fantastic option is that when one does the sprouting, you have a uh, abundant amount of nutrients and vitamins. Yeah, I mean, there's something that that's why we're seeing sprouts trending, like more and more people are sprouting, they're leaning into it, and they're making the shift. And I think that a lot of it is relative to what happened in the media, right? There used to be a few media sources promoting certain information, certain food companies would advertise on those things. But now with the disruption of content and like how we met through a podcast, you know, that's alternative media. And so we're getting the attention that you wouldn't have heard about this, you know, 20 years ago before podcasts. Like you <laughs> and I wouldn't be connected. You wouldn't be doing your own podcast. We wouldn't be sharing this information. Yeah. So a lot of it is we're taking advantage of the, the current times and trends in societal population. Yeah, absolutely. For those listening to this podcast and living in apartments, what is an effective method of growing sprouts in limited spaces? Yeah, look, I think that sprouts have been grown, you know, since the beginning of time. For the last several hundred years, the primary method was using a jar and cheesecloth and a rubber band. And since then, we've created like a nice jar with a stainless steel filter and an integrated stand to keep it at the right angle. Yeah. But the thing is, it's very easy to sprout, mm -hmm. right? You need high quality seeds. You need some sort of vessel. I prefer glass. And then you need some sort of filter to strain it, which some people use cheesecloth or these plastic lids. I prefer stainless steel because it's easy to clean and sanitize and it keeps the seeds and the sprouts in the jar and allows good flow of water and good flow of oxygen uh, transferring in and out. And do you also uh, focus on the quality of the water that you put in there? Is it, for example, from reverse osmosis or, or what kind of water should one use? Look, I, I think water is a very, very complicated issue. So my recommendations always is use the best water that you have available. Right. So, I mean, yeah. the best water to me is natural spring water that you could source on your own. But I don't want to like it's almost hypocritical and contradictory to tell someone go buy bottled water for sprouting. You know, when one of the evolutions of modern society is the tap. The problem with the tap is that they add things to the water, chloride, fluoride, etc. So. My feeling is the seeds want to sprout like they fundamentally want mm -hmm. to sprout and they will sprout using whatever water you you apply with them, even theoretically ocean water, right? Or brackish water, they will still sprout. Now, my recommendation is use the best water that you have available, period. So if you have reverse osmosis, use that you have bottled water, use that. You've got a, a little filter on the sink, use that. Like the most yeah. important thing is we don't want to stand on perfectionism. What we want to do is do the best we can. Fantastic. And from your point of view, as you've seen so many different types of sprouts, what are the healthiest one out there and which one are your favorite ones? Look, I think all sprouts are healthy, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the things that have the most research are the broccoli sprouts, right, from medicinal, from sulforaphane potential. So those are key. I think an everyday starter sprout for most people is mung beans or lentils because they're chewy, they're crunchy, they're rich in amino acids and proteins, and they sprout very quickly. As you mentioned, you had alfalfa sprouts. You know, alfalfa sprouts are light and a great salad substitute. So if you're consuming, yep. you know, sprouts in a salad, alfalfa sprouts are great for that. Okay, great. And to make them more tasty, what do you usually add to it? Do you have special sauces you like to prepare or what is your nicest combos you have found so far? I mean, one of the things for any of the spicy or bitter sprouts, whether it be radish, you know, or even broccoli, mixing them with a high quality fat, and I tend to prefer my fats coming in whole foods. So I prefer avocado yeah. um, as opposed to avocado oil. I prefer tahini, right, which is just crushed sesame seeds, sesame paste. 
as opposed to sesame oil, balsamic or apple cider vinegar or lemon, basically whatever dressings or sauces that someone likes that are clean, you can use to the sprouts and they're very effective. Okay, fantastic. I, I just have the image of putting one fork of broccoli sprouts into my mouth for one mouthful. What would that be equivalent to if you would have broccoli? Let's say, how much broccoli do you think would that be equivalent? Just one, one spoon of uh, sprouts? Well, I mean, everything is, is relative. You're clearly, in a bite versus a bite, you're going to get similar amount of fiber. You're going to get probably less calories, you know, with the sprouts. From a concentration mm -hmm. of certain nutrients, they might be higher. But one of the things I just want to make people aware of, like you still need to eat enough calories so that you don't shrivel away. So you still need thousands of calories. And when it comes to certain nutrients, I also don't believe in these profiles of you need so many grams of this and so many units of this. So I think if you're eating a wide array, you wouldn't be satisfied with one spoonful of sprouts, right? So if you have the broccoli sprouts versus the broccoli, you're going to have to eat a bowl of broccoli sprouts the same way you'd eat a head of broccoli. But if you ate the head of broccoli versus the bowl of broccoli sprouts, the amount of total nutrients would be greater in the broccoli sprouts the caloric intake would almost be the same because you have to eat a whole volume in order to get that. Yeah. Now, now most people have a problem, and I say most speaking in America, where two thirds of Americans are overweight or obese, that people are eating too much. Yeah. So I think if someone has an issue where they're trying to eat less by eating the sprouts, they're getting a lot of nutrients, but they're not getting a lot of calories. Yeah. So theoretically, it could be very beneficial, you know, for them to get that feeling of fullness without being too full and without overeating. And in that case, if I would recommend keeping it simple, not adding a lot of heavy dressings or fats, because then you're just using the sprouts as a carrier to get more fat, sugar and salt into your body. Yeah, I think dressings can be a very dangerous thing Yeah, because dressings could have so many hidden calories that people might think, oh, that tastes so light and so so good. And then you could just have so much of it that you just overloaded your system with way too many calories. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, you also wrote the book called The Sprout Book. Do you have any specific chapter in mind that we maybe have not covered yet in this conversation that you would like to highlight? I mean, look, I think I wrote the Sprout book because I needed to get all of my thoughts organized. I needed to document what I was doing. So, you know, the essence of the book is why to sprout, how to sprout, and what to do with the sprouts, right? So it's very essence, and it's, it's really was just a passion project for me yeah. to get that book out there. It's actually being translated into Spanish. Oh right now so it'll be in spain hopefully the end of this year Fantastic. you'll have a, a translated copy you know of the sprout book in your native tongue excellent excellent wow i'm really looking forward to that <laughs> fantastic and i'm very curious about your experiment that you did right at the beginning of our conversation you mentioned that you were i think 30 days on sprouts is that correct yes wow and and what was the um, result of that experiment how was your experience I felt a lot of energy mm -hmm. and I felt a lot of confidence. So it really helped me shift away from this scarcity, thinking about where's my food coming from and what happens if there's a food crisis or something to knowing that, hey, as long as I have seeds available, I can grow sprouts and I like them. They're nutritious for me. I also lost, you know, a lot of like belly fat I'd been carrying around since being a late teenager. So that did, and my energy was through the charts, like off the charts. Yeah. So the idea that sprouts were a great form of sustenance sounded great mm. in theory and actually worked out great in practice. Fantastic. That's really good to hear. 
And uh, I'm, I'm so grateful for you having done this experiment because I think that's a big eye opener for many, many people. Yeah. First of all, you need to get to the idea to do that. And the second one is that if people know that, how beneficial sprouts are for you and, and how it can actually really give you more that feeling of safety to know that no matter what can happen out there in the world, if I have some seeds at home, that I can still survive for a long time with those seeds that's at home. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's right. Well, Juan, I think you're doing terrific work and I'm really grateful that you had nice. me, you know, on your podcast <laughs> to you. share a little of my, my knowledge and uh, people Thank can you. feel free to message me at Doug Evans on Instagram or Sprout Wiz on TikTok. Currently, the sprouting company is selling in the U.S. only, but I see it uh, happening globally. But most important yep. thing, I want people to just be aware that sprouts are global and that people will enjoy every aspect of sprouting. Excellent. I'm so grateful for that. And I have two final quick questions for you today before we wrap up. And the first question is, as you're so much into wellness, could you tell us what other habits do you have throughout the day that you have seen that does a lot for your well-being? Yeah, I do about 300 push-ups a day. Wow. So every day, every day I do about 300 push-ups. It adds up to over 100,000 in a year. <laughs> so that's a good process. And I also do squatting, you know, body weight squats. It's good for your posture, yeah. good for your legs, good for your back. And I walk a lot. So I, I think that sitting down is not a good thing. So I like to be very mobile. So I'm, if I have to take a call, I'd rather take a walking call on the phone, you know, than sitting at the desk or the computer. And obviously meditation for me is very, very good because it helps me observe my thoughts and stay focused and choosing, you know, how you spend your time, right? And, and rather than just mm. being, you know, going with the wind, you know, being very deliberate of how I'm using and investing my time. Yeah. Well, that sounds really good. And therefore, I think it's a good introduction to the final question for today is, what is your definition of happiness? I mean, my definition of happiness is being able to be present and to be able to be in gratitude, right? So if I can look at all of the things that I have, all of my blessings, I'm very happy. You know, my family, my wife, my health, like these are things that make me, every, everything else is very impermanent. So if I have my family, you know, I'm happy. Yeah. If I'm helping people, I'm happy. Absolutely. Right. And it's a form of happiness that's not like, you know, the dopamine bell going off when like, oh, this video went viral or, you know, someone liked my post. Those things are not happiness. Those are just you know, reactionary things to uh, someone else's programming. Yeah, 100%. Well, thanks so much for that, Doug. And I'm sure that there are a lot of learning nuggets for the listeners from our show today. I'll put all the contact and, and your website into the show notes. I'm so grateful for the work you have done and for all of that communication that you do about all of this with health and wellness and about sprouting. And I'm looking forward to your future book coming out in Spanish, which is really good. I mean, it's the same book, but it's translated into Spanish, which yes. will be, I'm sure, a good seller over here. <laughs> Terrific. All right, Juan. Well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Doug. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye. What a great conversation with Doug. Here are the key highlights from our talk. Point number one. Incorporating sprouts into a plant-based diet can contribute to overall wellness and happiness. Point number two, sprouts are highly nutritious and offer a wide range of health benefits. Point number three, growing sprouts at home can be a sustainable and affordable way to ensure a fresh food source. And our final point number four is that sprouts can be enjoyed in various ways and can be enhanced with healthy dressings and sauces. Don't forget to check the show notes for links and details on where to find Doug. Now, I'm curious which part of this episode resonated most with you. I value your feedback and I would love to hear from you. Please take a moment to rate, subscribe and share this episode with anyone who could benefit from this content. Your support means the world to me and it motivates me to keep creating content that adds value to your life. 
Looking forward to connecting with you in the next episode. Big hugs, everyone.